thing out of it. Because I can tell you, we got power to cast stuff out. Hey, 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 hey. That's what's wrong with the church nowadays. This newfangled church, this new philosophy church. They want to counsel everybody. You can't counsel devils out. You got to cast them out in the name of Jesus. That's what's wrong with that. You want to sit down and put them to the step program. You don't need a prayer step program. You need a three step program. Repent, be baptized, and feel with the Holy Ghost. That's the program. That's the way out. I knew that he was that way and didn't want to be that way. And I said, I'm going to take the spirit of homosexuality and take it out of you. And you'll see you're not a homosexual. You're just possessed with the spirit of homosexuality. This is where apostolics are making a big mistake. It's because we've lost our spirituality. We've lost our spirituality. That's why we're so in awe sometimes when the real gifts of the Spirit open up in front of us. We can't believe it. It ought to be a common Come thing on. for the nine gifts of the Spirit to operate. It ought to be a common thing to have apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors. It ought to be a common thing for the five those We ought to be able to hear it said and say that is what thus saith the Lord. But we judge with our natural eye. And when you judge with your natural eye, you're going to be lied to because your heart will tell you things that aren't right. If you move by your emotions, you're not hearing from the Lord. That's right. I've had the Lord tell me something, and in the natural, it looked totally opposite to that. you got to decide whose report you're going to believe. So I, I started praying with this boy. I prayed with this boy. And as I began to pray for him, uh, I, I, I told him, I said, I command the spirit to come out of you, to loose you, to let you go. Not in my name, but in the name of Jesus. Do you know how powerful the name of Jesus is? I'm going to tell you something about how powerful the name of Jesus is. And I'm going to help you with something right here. I'm going to help you with something that us Pentecostals don't understand. But we need to understand because we know this. But we, we're, we're erasing some things. The disciples were casting out devils without the Holy Ghost. Come on. The day of Pentecost didn't happen until 50 days after the resurrection of the Lord. And that's when they received the Holy Ghost. But long before, three and a half years of Jesus walking in ministry on this earth, these disciples do not have the baptism of the Holy Ghost. He gave them his name. And with his name, they were casting out devils. generation that have the name and got the Holy Ghost. You know the devil didn't even wait around when the disciples were casting out devil to find out if they had the Holy Ghost. He didn't say, do they have the Holy Ghost? They believe in three or they believe in one. The devil didn't ask what their doctrine was. The devil said, the name of Jesus, we can't touch that. We don't want nothing to do. Why don't we split hairs about little stuff and say, in the name of Jesus. I said, that was that evil spirit leaving. 
I said, but there's a Holy Spirit coming. I got down on the floor, on the carpet, laid my hands on Brian's head. And as I began to pray for Brian, God filled Brian with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I told their hard-headed pastor, I said, baptize him. If a month goes by, he still ain't baptized. And I checked back. And he said, he still ain't wanting to baptize. They don't think that you gotta be baptized. I said, well, you gotta get baptized. And he said, he said, well, he said, I don't know. He said, I don't know how they baptize. I said, well, here's the thing. I said, when you get baptized in the name of Jesus, it's gonna be different than anything else you've ever done before. He said, well, I was baptized when I was young, you know, or somewhere. So I said, I'm not against folks that baptize Father, Son, Holy Ghost. I'm not against them. You can't win people by telling them they're wrong. And I said, I'm not against that. I said, hey, you know, at least you was trying. I said, but what I'm telling you is, is when you get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, you get the blood of Christ. You get the name of Christ. You get the blood of Christ. Something that happened to you that did not happen to you in 20 years ago. I told the pastor again, I said, you need to get him baptized. I tried to talk to him. He still don't want to baptize him. So I said, okay, look, I'm not a proselyter. I don't tell people to leave this church or leave that church or do nothing else. But I realized, I said, you know, I mean, there's something wrong here now. So I told Brian, I said, I'm preaching down the road at another church. And I said, if you'll just come. I didn't say nothing about baptism. I said, just come. I'm preaching. He shows up that night. And we baptized we, we that night about 12 or 15 people in the name of Jesus. I want to lie. Brian got in the line. Brian got in the line. We baptized Brian in the name of Jesus Christ. He stayed in the baptistry for about five minutes. When he got out the baptistry, he told me. He said, Preacher, he said, he said, I know you told me some stuff, but you ain't never lied to me. He said, But I want you to know when they said the name of Jesus over me in that water, he said, I said it that water, and he said, I was transported somewhere. I said, What do you mean? He said, I don't know how to tell you. He said, But it's like I opened my eyes and I was in heaven. He said, I wouldn't live this church no more. I said, Tell me about it. He said, It was like angels surrounded me in that baptistry. I said, Brian, you know what that is? I said, that's angels rejoicing over a sin that repent. That's angels rejoicing because you're a part of the God. Can I just tell you how I feel? You might as well let me because I'm going to tell you anyway. Can I tell you how I feel? I don't know about these Hollywood marriages that this man marries this woman, but she wants to keep her name because she likes her name. That marriage ain't never going to last. When that woman marries that man, she takes that man's name. When a bride gets hooked up to Jesus, you got to take his name. You don't tell me you're going to keep your name. You want to be who you are. I want to be called by the name of my bridegroom. Brian, this is a, a, a recovered, delivered homosexual. And I told that church, he, he told the pastor, and we went on a revival there for several weeks, and, and, and I, I was a friend of Brian, and I told them in this area, this is this, this area, uh, they got a lot of, you know, tough guys, redneck guys, tough whatever guys. And I called Brian up there on my last night of preaching about nine or ten weeks of revival. I think when we are done, we baptized 32 people in the name of Jesus. Brian was one of them. I pulled Brian up there and I put my arm around Brian. I said, I want to tell y'all something. I said, this boy is a recovered homosexual. I said, but don't say nothing. Because I know some of y'all that's committing adultery right now. So and so on pornography on your phone, I see it. And I said, so don't you dare throw a stone at this boy. And I told the church, and the pastor's a friend of mine, he knows what I was doing. He trusts my ministry. But I said, I'm going to tell this church, and when I leave from here, if you run this boy off, if you start calling him names like queer and sissy boy 
and all this kind of stuff that I know we're good at. If you start doing that kind of stuff, I said, and I hear that he leaves his church and you run him off and you didn't work with him or if he stumbles and you don't pick him up and help him, I said, I want you to know I will never bring my ministry back to this church again. I'm never coming back because Jesus would have worked with him and helped him. And I said, if you don't do what Jesus is going to do, then I am not going to come back and ever preach to you again. And you may not ever want me back again. But I'm just telling you that the Jesus I know, he works with people that nobody else wants to work with. This Jesus that I know, he helps people that nobody else wants to help. Does anybody here ever say, I'm glad when everybody else turned their back on me? That Jesus said, I'm with you, Come on. Come on. I'm with you, Johnson. I'm going to hold on to you. I don't care who don't like it. When the Lord wants to save you, he don't check with nobody. Let's raise our hands and work the law all over this house. All over this house. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, the more problems you got, the more you're kin to Jesus. nothing like some problems to get you humble enough to accept the real Jesus. And let me tell you something. I'm a prosperity preacher. I believe if you give, you pay your tithes, God will bless you. I also believe if you don't, you can be in some bad trouble. Let me just tell you. You a non tithe right here. Don't come ask God to bless you. Because he ain't obligated to bless you when you rob him from But when you start giving to the kingdom of God, I've watched sinners who were sinning, good sinners, pay their tithes and give to the church and God bless them. I'm a blessing preacher. I preach that if you give, God will bless you. You're not going to give too much to God. Too much to God. You're not going to do it. All and right. I got a word for somebody right now that is in here dealing with some financial problems. You need to start tithing. Come on. And if you'll start tithing, he said, I will rebuke the curse. I will rebuke the devourer out of your life. And I will open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing on you. You don't have room enough to receive. If you don't believe it, I'm prophesying to somebody right now. God will get you out of the world and the financial dilemma. You gonna stay in it. Keep asking the preacher, pray for me. No, I can't pray for you till you tithe first. I'm not being ugly. I'm trying to help you right now. Yeah. You can't ask God to heal you of lung cancer and keep smoking two packs a day. Yeah. Huh? You can't say, God, get rid of diabetes and you eating three bags of candy and sugar a day. Certain things you do come against what you're asking God to do. And you can't ask God to bless you. And while you're asking him to bless you, you're taken from the hand that's supposed to feed you. If you give God his part, God's going to give it back. Watch this. Press down, shake them together, and run it over. Stop being here and it'll work. It'll work. This is the story that I'm, I'm moving to change the order of this service. Preaching up in Amwell, Louisiana. It's April the 2nd this year. About 4.15, I get a text from my wife and she tells me, she says, listen, she said, uh, there's tornado warnings all over that area. She said, you need to get to the church. Church started at 6. And, and we had just that morning, we had baptized, we'd baptized a ton of people, and we had started baptizing black folks. All the racist people said, hey, oh. <laughs> I want some saying, I don't know, we're going to start doing that. We're going to start winning them kind of people. If you're going to go to heaven, Come you're on going now. to go with all kinds. It Come ain't on. a white heaven. Right. It ain't a black heaven. I know black people just as racist as some white people. We got to cut all that out. The church ought to be multicultural. Come on. It'll be every nation. No, Amen. Y'all need 
got some good black people in here. Amen. Yeah. You call black people to make you preach to them. Oh. You get to preach to some black people. They're like, come on, Rev, say that again. Hey, Lord. I mean, you get to preach to them. Some of y'all sitting here combing your hair, picking at your teeth, wiping your face. You need to get your mouth. You need some black people to come dance all over your blue state shoes. Come on. You need to hear a teacher how to have church. I don't wear a shirt that I won't worship in. I don't wear a tie that I won't throw on the floor and help somebody get the Holy Ghost in. It's not time to be cute, folks. I'm preaching. Some of us are bloody. We're wounded. We're hurting people. And we need Jesus. My Lord. Let's cross your arms. Let's cross your arms. Let's cross your arms. Come on. Come on. I'm not afraid to cry, to bleed, to sweat, to do whatever. At about at about about 4:15, when my wife sent me that text, I, I was sitting there with, with my Bible and getting my notes ready to preach that night. And the devil was mad because we were seeing all this this revival. I know he was mad. And, and so I told my wife, I said, "I'm getting ready to go." I never do this, but I have a prayer room at my house that I pray in, and, and I, I got a staff. I got this staff that I got in Oklahoma, and it stays hung up over my altar in my house. And sometimes I, I pray with it, but it usually hangs there. I take it, and sometimes I just shake it, you know, in the devil's face. I just say, I rebuke you, and just pray. I pray over cities. I pray over Watson. I just pray. I just pray with it. Nothing special about it. Nothing scriptural about that. I just do it. I got this staff. And then I just, I, I hang it up. Think about Moses and Aaron. And for some reason, when I went to that revival, I took that staff with me. And I was sitting there at 415 April the 2nd this year. And my wife gives me this, this text about tornadoes coming through Alexandria and up through Gina to Aimwell. When she did, I said, well, I'm going to hurry and get ready. I don't know why I did it, Pastor, but I took that staff and I put that staff in the door of what was about a 30-foot long uh, uh, mobile home that was at Bay just listed quarters. It was up on pylons. I, I took that staff and I set it in the door, kind of crossways in the store. Uh, I walked into the back and began to get ready for church and within two minutes, a tornado, an EF2 tornado, hit the front of that church and caved in a 40-foot brick section of that church. Just about killed the people inside. They run for safety. It was lifting the doors or pulling the doors off. Uh, in that church, the doors opened and it took sheetrock and everything out the front of that church and through it all the way up on the platform, busting stuff off the walls. When I got to that church, I, I just got to tell you this, when I got to that church the first morning, uh, in that prayer chamber where I used to pray, where that, uh, that, that, that rod was, I had wrote out the hand of the Lord come on me, and I wrote a prophecy out to that church, and it was this, it said, remember not the old things, uh, uh, remember not the things that have been the revivals of the days on, the greatest revival has come to this church that you've ever seen, then it said something like this, it said, I'm sending strong winds. I'm allowing winds to come to shake you and to blow off that which is not rooted but I will stand with you. Can I tell you that when that wind blew through that church, it blew everything but I had taken that prophecy and I took a tack when I was preaching and I tapped it on the wall. I put it on the wall of that church. I stuck it on the wall. When that wind started blow, blow everything, that prophecy stayed on the wall. EF2 tornado caves in the front of that church, comes in, comes to the back where I'm at in that evangelist quarters, picks that evangelist quarters up and throws it about a hundred feet, flipped me four times. I think Brother Stewart knows about it. Flipped me four times in there. I was flipping around for my life. Whenever I come to myself, I was covered in blood. My head was gashed, had a fractured jaw, thought my neck was broken. I was disoriented, I couldn't hear, and I was standing about knee deep in the floor of that of that home and looking around trying to figure out what was going on and I noticed that the seat was up in the air and the, and the light bulbs were down on the floor I was between a washing machine and a refrigerator blood dripping all over the place my jaw and my neck was swollen up to here and I was trying to figure out what is going on and something spoke to me I said Lord I said this place is upside down this thing is turned upside down. And I heard the voice of the Lord speak to me. He said, yes, but you're still standing right side up. Yeah. Yeah. 
when they finally got to me and they opened up the door to let me out, they had to put a chair. The door was upside down. When I stepped out that door, I realized that was the very door that I had put that staff in for just whatever reason. I walked through it. What I'm telling somebody right now is your world may be upside down. Your life may be turned on its head, but God is going to keep you right side up. He won't let you get some strong. He won't let you get some damage. But you're going to have to walk through this thing and say, Yay, yeah, Lord, I'll walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. I will weep me. I will lie and I stand. They shall cut with me. Yeah, I'll come to tell somebody. You might have some scars, but you're still standing. I dare you to shout, I'm still standing, devil. your storm a lesson, to teach that devil a lesson, is cancer can eat up everybody else, but it can't eat up me. Come on. And nobody is able to talk about what God got you out of. You can't talk about being delivered from something you ain't never come out of. And some of you have come through relationship problems, and come through problems in your home, and come through financial distresses, and been through all types of problems, marital and everything else. And the devil is sitting there laughing, trying to tell you, you ain't nothing like Jesus. Hold on just a minute. His scars equal my sins. And he wasn't ashamed of his scars, which means he ain't ashamed of my sins. That he wouldn't have a scar on him if it weren't for my sins that put it there. But when he showed up, he said, look at what I've been through. All right. Look at my hands and look at my feet and look at what I have walked through and look and what God sent me here tonight to tell somebody is quit being ashamed of your scars. Quit being ashamed of what God has brought you through. Quit being ashamed of what happened to you and what you faced. Quit being ashamed. The very thing that the devil is telling you, you ought to be ashamed of that. That's what you ought to be testifying about. That's what you ought to be standing up saying, yeah, that's right. Most people get a divorce, it kills them. But I'm still in church living for God. Yeah, most people get a little, most people get abused. Most people get molested. Most people get hurt. It messes them up. I'm still standing. God, show me, Lord, what my purpose is. I'm still here. I'm still standing. I'm still in this place. God, I'm here for a reason. I'm here. Jesus. Push your hand right up on your heart and say, God, heal my heart. But if you want to leave a scar there, it's okay. I'll just tell somebody that's what he brought me through. I'll leave that scar there and I'll say, that's what I come through. That's what God got me out of. Rejoice not against me, O oh, my adversary. When I fall, I shall rise. Some of you that have been through all kinds of bondage. Some of you that have come out of alcoholism. Keep your hand right there on your heart for a moment. God is doing something in here. God wants to heal you. He wants to take you from a wound to a scar. But he might not ever get rid of the scar. Jesus 
has had scars, not wounds. Wounds are still bleeding. Scars are what used to be wounds but have since healed up. God's telling somebody tonight, quit picking at your wounds so it can heal. Quit being your own worst enemy. Quit beating up your own self. Quit destroying your own self. Quit being down on your own self. Quit talking against and cursing your own self. God's reaching in somebody's heart right now to heal this. You gotta quit talking about stuff like it just happened. You gotta quit hiding all kinds of stuff and acting. Up. You gotta just say, look, that was then, but this is now. God is healed. God has brought me out. That was that was a long time ago, but things are different now. Things have changed. Things have since changed for me. Let him help us for a moment. Let him help us. Let him help us. Let him help us. Let him help us. situation I've ever faced. You know every bit of it. And yet still you're not ashamed of me. He told in the name. In the name. In the name. I'm just letting that settle on you for a moment. I want that to settle on you for a moment. I want that to settle down on you for just a moment. Let it just fall down on you now. Jesus. 